We wish we could tell you about Ukraine's chief intelligence officer Kirill Budanov and the defense intelligence of Ukraine which he leads, about 10 attempts on his life, raids to Crimea, numerous explosions at Russian airfields in the last month alone, and trolling even on the intelligence badge. But all of this is highly classified. <laughs> well, all right, there are a few things we can share publicly. In late August, it became known that a Russian Mi-8 helicopter transporting parts for Su-27 and Su-30 SM fighter aircraft between two Russian air bases changed its course, crossed the border and landed near Kharkiv. DIU was prepared for its arrival. They neutralized two crew members and safely relocated the pilot, who had covertly brought the aircraft into Ukraine. We've managed to find the right approach to this person and created circumstances for him to safely relocate his entire family from Russia without drawing attention. We facilitated his takeover of this aircraft discreetly, without arousing suspicion from other crew members. The cost of such a helicopter, even in a civilian configuration, can reach 15 to 17 million dollars. Forbes has noted that this Mi-8 AMTSH will be among the most sophisticated assault helicopters in Ukrainian service. This is not the only instance of recent aviation-related incidents involving Russian forces, as reported by the DIU. At the end of August, intelligence sources revealed that within a few days, individuals trained by them launched attacks on two Russian military airfields, Shaikovka and Solty, and damaged five aircraft. Notably, a 222M3 long-range strategic bomber, capable of carrying several X-22 cruise missiles, was burned to the ground. Such missiles and such aircraft were previously used by Russia in attacks on a shopping center in Kremenchuk and a residential building in Dnipro. In the same late August, the Russian equivalent of the Patriot system, the S-400, was destroyed in Crimea. A few days later, there was another drone attack this time on an airfield in Pskov. Reports indicate that four Il-76 strategic airlifters were either destroyed or damaged. On August 24th, the DIU operatives on speedboats landed at Cape Tarhankut in occupied Crimea, where the Russian 3rd Radio Technical Regiment is based. The DIU reported that all soldiers returned unharmed, in contrast to the Russian side, which suffered more than 30 casualties and damage to four speedboats. The Guardian summarized these events, stating that Ukraine celebrated Independence Day with first raid into Crimea. Have you noticed the word first? Oh yes, more are to come. Impossible missions are a specialty of the DIU. The British newspaper The Times has reported on the elite 10th Special Forces Detachment under the Nick Shaman. These fighters undergo grueling tests and have skills in diving, parachuting and mountaineering. According to the Times, they are dispatched deep into Russian territory to sabotage strategic factories, ammunition depots and communication networks. The newspaper quotes a fighter with the call sign Handsome. Often, they can't even believe we were there. During the onset of the full-scale invasion, the 10th DIU detachment was among those confronting elite Russian airborne troops at the Hostomel airfield near Kyiv and defended the critical Moshun village on the way to the capital. There were situations when we moved along parallel streets with the Russians. At times, only a few dozen meters separated us, and at other times, just a few centimeters. Shaman played a pivotal role in one of the most intricate international operations in recent times. In August 2021, the 10th detachment of the DIU flew to Kabul to help evacuate people after the Taliban seized power. Soldiers went multiple times daily into the city, already under Taliban control, to conduct evacuations. On August 27th, they successfully rescued 19 Afghan translators working with Canada, just hours after a suicide attack at the airfield which killed at least 170 Afghans and 13 U.S. soldiers. In total, the DIU soldiers managed to evacuate around 700 people from various countries. The final aircraft used for the evacuation of civilians from Kabul was Ukrainian Il-76. Other famous DIU special operations include a helicopter mission to break through to the besieged Azovstal in Mariupol. Over seven flights, they evacuated 64 wounded individuals, landed 72 volunteers to reinforce Mariupol's defenders, and delivered 30 tons of cargo. 
The DIU's crack and special forces unit helped liberate over 25 settlements during a counteroffensive in the Kharkiv region. Additionally, the intelligence special forces, together with the security service of Ukraine, landed on the Snake Island to regain control over it. Watch our other stories about these unique special operations. Chief of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, Major General Kirill Budanov, played a pivotal role in the development of all these operations. At the age of 37, he stands as one of the youngest chiefs of defense intelligence, not only in Ukraine's history, but across the globe. Yet even before his appointment in 2020, Budanov was well known in the intelligence community. In 2016, he led a daring raid of Ukrainian intelligence officers into occupied Crimea. Back then, five DIU Special Forces fighters engaged the elite Vimpel group of the Russian FSB within hostile territory. As a result, a Russian lieutenant colonel and a lance corporal were killed, and several enemy fighters were wounded. The Ukrainian intelligence officers returned unharmed. However, not always things went so smoothly. During other operations in various years, Budanov sustained injuries three times, with one living shrapnel near his heart. But the head of the DIU himself does not like to talk about this. Typical excerpts from his interviews often look like this. This matter is definitely not for public discussion. I choose not to answer this question. I am refraining from answering. However, in addition to such responses, Budanov can calmly recount the story of how a Russian missile hit the DIU building on the first day of the invasion and reveal at least 10 attempts on his life. I like this. It's a form of acknowledgement, showing that I'm good at my job. Another item in Budanov's office was a map of Russia with markings indicating potential areas of disintegration. When asked what he would say to Putin, Ukraine's top intelligence officer responded. Withdraw your troops and try to give Russia at least some hope for the future. Almost all the activities of the defense intelligence of Ukraine are classified. However, even what is known is impressive. Their daring raids on enemy territory and information and psychological operations stand as badges of honor. Remarkably, their badge itself seems to hold a certain premonition. The Russian intelligence badge features a bat, while the Ukrainian one shows an owl. It's worth noting that the traditional prey of the owl is bats.